There's nothing worse than trying to get a hold of someone and you can't because there's no connection. Well, Jorge had this problem at some music festivals, right? And you came up with a solution. Tell us what Gotenna does. Uh, Gotenna is a, um, is a small device that pairs with your phone. It's this little guy right here. And it pairs with your phone over Bluetooth and then it allows you to communicate with anyone else that has the device as well up to several miles around you without any cell service. So no cell service, no Wi-Fi, no satellites, nothing. No central infrastructure. As long as you have a Gotenna and somebody else has a Gotenna, you can send text messages, GPS coordinates, offline mapping data and other things like that up to several miles away. So it's very useful for places where you're off grid like you're hiking or skiing or even for emergency preparedness like uh, you know when the cell towers all went down during Sandy. They not, Sandy knocked out about a third of the towers in a 10 state area and all of a sudden everyone's smartphones were no longer communications devices and we wanted to find a technology that allowed people to communi continue to communicate no matter what and that's where it came from. Yeah, it's kind of like turning a, a smartphone into a, a really smart walkie-talkie, right? Yeah, really smart. Uh, it does, so you don't have to worry any of the about the walkie-talkie stuff you might normally like, you know, sometimes you hear other people's voices and there's interference and channels and all that stuff that makes a walkie-talkie not something you want to use. The uh, the Gotenna manages all of that internally. It just has its own little protocol, and you just have an app on your phone. It looks like iMessage or Google Maps, and you just find somebody in your contacts, and you can just send them a message. One-to-one -one private encrypted messages, uh, group private encrypted messages, or public broadcasts if you're asking for help and you're in an emergency or just want to kind of chat with other people in the area as well. Excellent. Well, uh, Jorge, I wish you luck. Wait, before I, I wish you luck, though. How much would one of these things set me back, or a pair of them? They're sold in pairs, and uh, one pair is $200, oh, $199, right? So basically about 100 bucks a pop. Let's talk a little bit about the technology. You're using 150 megahertz? Yes, we're using, uh, inside of here, we have a homegrown 150 megahertz, two watt VHF radio. And then that radio is then controlled via a proprietary protocol that we've built. And that protocol will do a bunch of things. Like it will do, uh, it will scan all the channels to make sure there isn't interference. If there is interference, it'll hop off onto different channels to avoid it. All to make sure that you can try to get you can try to get your message through no matter what. Um, it's a public band, so it's important to you know there can be other people using it. Like you know industrial radio sometimes use it, but you know it's usually pretty open. But with this protocol, you can avoid a lot of interference and make a maximum use of the frequencies that are available to you. So do you do any extra compression on the voice, or is that done in the in the phone? Oh, so we don't actually do any voice. There's no voice. That's the big sacrifice, right? So we do text messages and the sharing of GPS coordinates via pins on an offline map. Uh, we don't do voice because we found that most people don't really communicate with voice anymore. Um, it also allows us to just be a lot smaller and lighter because the battery requirements for voice are just mo so much higher because you have to do a continuous transmission. By doing just small bursts data, we can just send out much more communication than you can ever do over voice over just little bursts of, you know, whether it's the GPS coordinates or a text message saying, hey, I broke my leg, help here, you know, like, you would be hard pressed to explain exactly what happened and where you are without, you know, minutes of like trying to explain what's going on. And then that's why you have these big bulky radios. And with us, it's just, I need help and here's my pin, click, and it just goes out right away and it's very, very light. That makes a lot of sense. And it, it seems like there could just be, and you alluded to this, there's applications in public safety. Um, setting up ad hoc network. Yeah, so we've had a, so this product is, you know, focused on the consumer market right now. So, you know, outdoor hiking, skiing and so forth. But we, even so, we've had a lot of inbound interest from people in the security community. That's uh, everything from uh, local uh, volunteer search and rescue teams to uh, special forces and, you know, military people as well. They've, they see the need for a very lightweight uh, and easy to use communication system that can, you know, augment the capabilities for the phone that everyone already has in their pocket. Do you, um, do you see this potentially being in a mesh type configuration? So maybe, you know, you could do, use different kind of triangulation and so forth? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, currently the FCC doesn't allow us to mesh on this, uh, on this, uh, well, they're, they're kind of, in, they're, they're, they're unclear on what you can do, uh, but on the verging on the side of not really on the on the MERS band. Uh, but we do have plans for other products in the future where this can potentially be created. But the big stumbling block for this kind of product and different versions of this product and doing international 
national versus all is that regulations for frequencies are very different from country to country and you know what you can do with them as far as power and data types and can you mesh or can you not mesh just is really changes from place to place so you know we need to find you know kind of strike a balance between what do people really want and what can we give them you know not just from a technical perspective but from a regulatory one as well right now this felt like the right fit for our current generation of products because it has the you know the largest sec you know the largest range on a point to point basis and you know that's kind of what you need when you don't have you know millions of gotennas out there yet right we're a young company so it made sense that for now you know if it's only you know one two three four five people on a hiking trip or whatever using it you're going to want you know the maximum point to point data you know information you can and then the MERS band was uh, unique in, al in allowing us to do that much power at such a low frequency. Excellent. Well, Jorge, I really appreciate your time and good luck. Thank, Thank you very you. much.